Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm Joe and today we're going to explore using smartphone cameras, more specifically the one in the S9 Plus as your main YouTube camera. Let's get started. So this isn't a very new concept and many YouTubers have made use of smartphone cameras in the past to produce some really high quality content. So creators like Danny Winget turned to smartphone cameras in the past for an easy way to produce 4K content. Now in 2018, smartphone cameras have advanced even farther and there are four pretty specific reasons why I believe the S9 Plus and its camera can be your main camera for YouTube if you're just starting out on a budget. So first reason for me is the ability to have manual control over things like ISO, aperture, shutter speed, and focus. Now while this isn't a groundbreaking feature, and yet it's true you can always download a third party app for this, the fact that it's already built into the camera software means you don't have to spend extra cash to purchase an app. The controls are simple and easy to use, essentially making use of a slider that changes based on what feature you have selected. Now simply slide your finger up and down to switch through shutter speed, adjust the ISO, or pull your subject into focus. One thing I certainly appreciate is the focus peaking option so that you have a nice green indication to help you know when your subject is completely in focus. Having this kind of control over your camera can really help you elevate the quality of your content. Now next up for me is the ability to shoot 4K at 60 FPS. So if you're someone who was inspired to start creating content from someone like Sam Colder or even Peter McKinnon, you know the use of slow motion can really enhance the look of your videos and shooting at a higher frame rate means that you'll be able to slow down your footage and post and have it look significantly smoother than something shot at 30 FPS. One of the only downsides to 60 FPS mode on the S9 is no stabilization. But on the flip side, that also means that if you're using a stabilizer like the DJI Osmo 2, your stabilizer won't be fighting with your phone and you'll avoid those micro jitters that can be seen when shooting with something like an iPhone. So now that you have that beautiful 4K 60fps footage, where do you store it? A 4K files can be large and the ability to use expandable storage with the S9 Plus is number 3 on my list. It may not seem significant at first, but the convenience of expanding your storage to store these large files is a convenience you didn't know you needed. You likely have better use to make of your phone's internal storage and having your footage on an SD card can actually make file transfer easier. Okay, okay, so hear me out on this one. I know there are plenty of people out there editing a video on a Mac, and while you can install Android Transfer to move files from your phone to your computer, it's easier and more reliable to simply transfer from an SD card to your machine. So finally, last reason on my list is the dual aperture lens. And while you may possibly see the least amount of value from this, especially if you're shooting in a controlled environment like your home studio, it's still nice to have. Not only does f1.5 provide more light in lower light situations, but it also provides more depth of field. You should see a nice little bump up in that blurred background aka bokeh from f2.4 to f1.5. So the bottom line here is if you're on a budget, using a smartphone camera is a great way to get your channel off the ground. The ability to use a device you more than likely already have means you won't need to spring for a camera and with a smaller investment you can be making videos in no time. My personal opinion would be to start investing in a nice tripod and go from there. Okay, well that does it for another one. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please smack that like button and also consider subscribing if you aren't already. I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.